enslavement of black people, the kind of form it's taken on, you know, where people have been completely cut off by all roots, I mean, you know, total you know, disregard for their heritage, their history, their name, their land, etc. Now, if you examine other people throughout antiquity of slavery, you'll find out they were never dehumanized in that kind of way. So we're talking about a kind of conditioning process that is peculiar only to America, and that America has not only used effectively on black people in North America, but also in Central and South America, and also in other places where you find its armies occupied around the world. Well, I think, well, I uh, think we... Yeah, in referring to the kind of physical bondage that we've experienced, I think that here we've been forced into a self-realization of our inner capacities as humans, and that this realization dates back thousands and thousands of years. It's part of the continuum of the whole human struggle that whatever external forces, whether they're the thunder, the lightning, or some other uh, secondary creations, whatever they are, the human mind and spirit moves in a forward way, aspiring for the same things that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. It isn't mm -hmm. new, mm -hmm. justice, love, kinship, truth, integrity. Well, actually, we have, we have exploded and practically destroyed the, the whole approach of, of Western society as to what real values were. Because, I mean, we should be a dead people if we had really become victims of what had been perpetrated upon us. But instead, we are a, a living people with a kind of vitality which is a wonderment to the world itself. Right, our whole existence is the most comprehensive core of reality in, uh, in the world, I'd say, right now, because we embody the contradictions of the greatest um, nation in the sense of affluence, and yet we live uh, the reality of the most oppressed in that greatest nation. And so that being able to uh, understand and deal with this whole range of the human capacity is a kind of a, a giant existence internally. And I think that the message is that uh, people are capable of overcoming any of the polarizations of a human experience. But it requires internalizing the whole human spirit. You know, you can't elect to just have, you know, the good so-called and not really understand what it is that supports that good, you know, when you judge people. I think, I think it might be important to talk about what Maddie calls the polarizations or the divisions or the separatisms, you know, that, that we've been thrown into to show people very clearly how they become victimized. And this goes across the board for people who are contained <coughs> inside of the borders of an oppressed, uh, oppressed land. Um, because what happens is it's a mental kind of oppression. Uh, and I think Pat often demonstrates how it is young versus old, how it is man versus woman. Uh, you know, it never talks in terms of how it is each being, you know, evolving from something and how it's complementary to one another and how it has a kind of relationship to itself which is, you know, infinitum. It's, it's ageless, you see. But as long as you can attempt to have those kinds of divisions within the rank and file of people, you see, uh, as long as you can divide people based on classes, et cetera, or any kind of division you want to use, then, of course, and they, and they accept it, then they, too, become the tools of the kind of oppression. Not only are they oppressed, but they become the tools for their own oppression. You see, the very fact that uh, uh, you take many of our people, black people who uh, completely refuse to accept uh, the concept of blackism, you know, or black is beautiful, were enslaved by a thing called negritude. They're, you know, the very fact that we won't accept those kind of concepts kept them enslaved. They weren't even looking beyond that, what it meant conceptually. Well, actually, this is a very vicious kind of a thing. For instance, I heard a teacher last night who was making some rather severe criticism of, of the educational system, but then she sort of stepped back and said, but of course, since I an employee of the board, I would have to be careful, you know, how I speak. Or I heard someone else say that because I, I work in this particular concern, I must be careful about how I express myself. And so these, these controls and this form of enslavement mm -hmm. are well, built uh, across the board throughout the whole structure of life in, in, in the whole nation. Mm -hmm. And people are uh, restricted and prevented from really expressing themselves honestly, freely, and humanly because they are enslaved and boxed into these various structures. Mm -hmm. I think the key was Walter's saying mm -hmm. we have accepted. Because what we must accept is the unlimited diversity of the whole universe. And when, uh, you know, Ted talks about the cosmos, you know, uh, all of that is ours. But having accepted the limitations that have been put before us as if they were real, 
constrains us to function within those limitations. And that's where uh, mentally visualizing a uh, place fit for human habitation gives you the tools to begin to work to create that kind of place. But if you're stuck into uh, a mentality that says this is the best possible world, then you're not going to use all the elements which are available. You know, you're not going to accept the utility of everything. You're going to limit yourself to, to something very futile. And this is where I see uh, the whole impact of what black people are about, at least here in Philadelphia, when we, you know, get together and create ideas. Because creation, I think, takes place first in the mind and secondly uh, in the physical uh, realm. And one of the problems is that when we're forced to deal with structures, programs, <coughs> projects, you know, fixed relationships, uh, this is a paralysis. And we must insist that whatever our commitments are in terms of uh, eating and sleeping, you know, and getting that, those necessities, that they must serve some other purpose than simply, you know, getting creature comforts in an affluent uh, society. You know, it seems to me that we're, we're, we're really the product of a living dead indiv individuals. And so uh, realizing this and really realizing the constraints that are placed upon uh, uh, black human beings, it seems to me that, that our spirit, uh, what we talk about in terms of the mental, physical, and uh, uh, mental, physical, social uh, environment <clears throat> and spiritual uh, attitudes must be redefined and redirected mm -hmm. in terms of uh, 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 living this experience in what I term <laughs> Uh, a three-inch span of time, because that's all our life is. That's all it means to me anyway, and I'm at the two-and-a-half-inch mark. Did you say <laughs> that again, a three-inch? <laughs> My life is only three inches long. That's how I judge myself. And so right now, it's at two-and-a-half inches, and Lord knows we have to uh, begin to redirect and safeguard uh, uh, the future, you know, for the, our black children that are going to come which means uh, that uh, we have to then begin to know ourselves. Mm -hmm. see. And once we know ourselves and free our mind, we free our spirit, you see. Well, it seems that, you know, after defining, you know, where black people are at, where they were from, that in terms of uh, building a better society, that previously roles and things have been dichotomized, you know, leading to two separate divisions or more, you know, like you get the young here and then you get the old here, that at this point we must start saying how are roles complementary to each other, mm -hmm. how are they reciprocal to each other, and building, you know, throwing the parts back together into a working whole instead of dichotomizing them into, separate, into two separate divisions. Visions. Well, actually, and I think when we begin to speak about the whole, uh, at one moment we may be within Philadelphia as we view Philadelphia, mm -hmm. but then I'm sure that all of us uh, become aware of our kinship to our black brothers and particularly people around the world, non-white people of the world, who have been subjected to the dehumanization of, of this kind of a culture. And so the kinship is not only uh, in our consciousness here in Philadelphia, but it has gone across the oceans. And so we are breaking out of the, the, the kind of separation between young and old, male and female, uh, across the ocean and mm -hmm. becoming uh, one people. Yes. This is, yeah. I, think, I think something, too, to further the kinship, which is very important for those of us who think we see this vision and see hope, and that is for us to develop Within, amongst our people, a kind of language which allows them to understand pretty much what we've been, what we've been capable of defining. I think that there are very few black, black people who aren't where we are, or who aren't looking to go to where we are. And I think that what needs to happen is we have to somehow, you know, amongst ourselves, constantly be trying to relate to them with a language which is certainly communicable, you know, which tends to do that because what has happened, there are so many vehicles which are used against us, you know, the very, this thing here, and you know, newspapers, et cetera, which always tend to malign all the things that we're doing. So there, there needs to be some kind of models established where we can show very seriously, you know, that the kinship we talk about is a living reality. Uh, I know that many of us do that, you know, personally. But somehow I think we're going to have to, uh, to find some way uh, to identify the haves, you know, so that they can learn how to share with the have-nots, you see, right. which would allow our people to see very simply that when we talk in terms of love, it's a, 
it's not just a word, but it's a feeling, it's, it's a kinship, there's something that's transmitted beyond the word love, and that we are a living example of that, right. that there's, sort of thing. There seems to be a, um, a kind of philosophy developing among us blacks that practically anything and everything that we do is for our children, is for the oneness of our children and our mothers and fathers, you see? A whole uh, people. Right, which makes a people, a nation. And that one line of poetry that may exemplify this fact reads, do not let your children, when they grow, look into your eyes and curse you by pitying your Tomish ways. So this is the kind of this is the kind of compulsion that our that our young children are, are putting to us. Mm -hmm. you know? um, okay, I was going to comment on Father Washington's uh, kinship, and, and actually, you're talking about 75 percent of the world, and so we so we we have a responsibility as as the majority. Uh, as black people to create a model of humanity because mm -hmm. we haven't seen one we have to create it and that is the language that has to in other words language will i guess is more than words it will be the way we live we will communicate and the play till malcolm woke us didn't really depend on dialogue right. but like right. the message came through to us you know right. that physical bondage was one thing but that we still had you know something else to overcome in terms of the fighting that was going on right. among the people, uh, among us. And this diversity, once we understand that diversity is not division, then it becomes the wealth of the world. Because as I said right. before, it's all here. You know, it's all good, it's all to be used. But right. when we allow language, which is one of the barriers, uh, to dictate relationships and values, which language is to use something, it's a handle, it's a definition, it's a tool, and it, in that sense it's only relative. And when it no longer um, speaks with integrity, you know, you throw the tool away. And this is why we have to have some four-letter words and things like that, you know, to create some kind of meaning for communication, right. because the, the uh, so-called acceptable language, you know, as words, doesn't communicate the kind of meanings that we're about. So we have right. to use our bodies, yeah, our minds, our thoughts, our whole living experience to communicate. Yeah, well, actually, what, what, what we have to do there uh, is to cause our children to not be placed in a bag again by right. the teacher who says, you know, they have come into our schools and they have a vocabulary of only a thousand words. Right. Actually, right. I mean, they, they have a vocabulary which in, in our world and in our culture they communicate quite effectively. Right. And uh, just because we have not learned the language of the society from which we have been excluded, then we are judged by that. And we right. cannot afford to allow our children to feel negated by the fact that they have not learned this foreign language. And right. we cannot just accept about the retardation as a label for such children. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, a moment, Walt mentioned about uh, getting information together, you know, and just disseminating it amongst our people so that they can, uh, you know, have a some, something to grasp a hold of. And it, it, it reminds me of a, of, a, of a cell, you know, an organic cell, which, uh, uh, or growth, which just begins to relate to each other. And I think that's what black people are all about today. It's a today. genesis, We're, a new beginning. Right. We are talking about a, a forming a, a, nu a nucleus and uh, identifying with, with each other, brothers and sisters, and mm -hmm. being able to exchange uh, thoughts and ideas, because after all, aren't we all saying what is truth to me is information to you, and right. what is information right. to you is truth to me. So this is what black people are saying, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, the sum of the parts, you know, if it's right, if the mix, if the matrix is right, the sum of the parts equal a unified and disciplinary whole. And the disciplinary whole being, you know, the total uh, uh, black is beautiful concept, you know. The integrity think, of a people. Yeah. Right. Right. I think that if, if we look at ourselves in terms of the new birth, and we talk in terms of, from conception, the conception of the idea of the knowledge. And we go through the nine months, you know, pregnancy and the labor, which brings us deliverance. Then we talk in terms of the new baby being a combination of, you know, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. what, a com what a potent combination that would have been. See, to endow all black people with that kind of spiritual, you know, mental and physical, 
you see, gift is just, it's possible, it's attainable. You know, I see that it's possible in every one of us. I see that every one of us has that potential to be that kind of mixture. You know, I can see this uh, uh, whole thing in the context of, uh, you know, what the physical environment is now, you see. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, maybe, you know, if we talk about what our goals are and uh, what our aspirations would be, what, what's coming up next, you know? Uh, what, what can we look forward to uh, by, by, by stimulating the cell, uh, by still stimulating all the particles in the cell, uh, all kinds of hell break loose, you know, because of the, the, the mind, because it has been free, uh, uh, creativity then begins to blossom in a new direction. Uh, I like to think that uh, out, out there, uh, uh, black people uh, is black gold, black mm -hmm. oil. It's an untapped resource, which, of course, none of us yeah. have really done anything about it. And I think it's total hypocrisy for, for individuals, you know, to begin to think in terms of uh, 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 the, the wealth and the use of, of the kinds of things that, that are necessary for human survival. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it, it's beyond me. You know, it, in, it involves all of us. It's beyond right. any one of us. And, and at, this is what I meant about our responsibility mm -hmm. to speak to uh, a system, a survival system for the human species mm -hmm. because we cannot really expect any other uh, one to do it except those of us who, who see the necessity that it must be a system because under a perfect defense system or any other machine system or any other system predicated on destruction uh, we will not survive the species will not survive it. and in that context Dave, when you say all hell might break loose would that be any different than kingdom coming no, that's right, right. and the thing is who has any more claim you know, towards being a chosen people to give that kind of direction than an oppressed people in the jaws of this nation. And I think when you look at it from that point of view, when you look at it in terms of a world impact, then it means that you move away from being so close. No matter that we're here, it seems that what we have to do is be that living model, some 40 or 50 million of us, you know, as oppressed people, so that the rest of the oppressed world, because we have to see ourselves aligning ourselves with oppressed people the world over. Mm -hmm. I think that when black people get to that point, when they come to that realization, of course, I think that many things are going to happen in order to wake us up to that point. Then I think that, you know, the movement of this kind of spirit, and of course, when I say movement, I'm talking about a, a force which is beyond what we call soul. Mm -hmm. and I know you understand what I'm saying. That what happens is that uh, we will have, in our lifetime, seen what many have said we would never see. What Dr. King talked about. Yeah. Yeah, and the thing about it is that. <laughs> Uh, when you said a little while ago, Ted, that we seem to be out of the land of the living dead, uh, it reminds me of uh, the story of creation when there was darkness over all the world and God said, let there be light. And uh, out of this darkness, uh, light came. And we have been in a dark age. And from out of this darkness, there is indeed light. light is uh, mm -hmm. th there is spirit. Right. There is life itself. Yeah, I think yeah. Brother Malcolm uh, uh, noticed this in him when he was in bondage. And suddenly there's dawn. And this is a right. doggone good feeling. I know I, uh, as, a, as, a, as a black man, uh, I, I've witnessed this myself. I, we don't know what we can do as, as, a, as a human species. And I think that uh, once we free our minds, uh, then we can move on to bigger and better things. Yeah, but uh, uh, there is a, a danger sometimes. I know that uh, wherever there is life, there is creativity, and we will have to make sure that uh, the emerging black people does not look upon doing mm -hmm. uh, in the same kind of material, uh, technical kind of a way, that there is uh, worth in, in being itself and the being will bring about a new kind of doing and well, it certainly may not follow and I hope it will not follow the same materialistic kind of thing. That, well That's, I'm yeah. convinced, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm certainly convinced of this, that the base in, in order to see this, in order for this uh, kind of direction to come to a fruition, we have to have a base and the base being, you know, the mental, physical and spiritual right. thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the full dimensions yeah. of right. But remember that the whole thing, remember that the enemy and what you, which you're up against is a very powerful one. I don't think that we can relax at all. For us, mm -hmm. it's 24 hours of, of living, thinking, eating, sleeping, breathing, drinking. Our whole blackness has to be seen just that way. And what has to happen, we have to recognize that we're being programmed not to be that way. 
Remember that what is being said to our people and to the people of the world, that what you need is more cars, that what you need is more jobs, that what you need is more money, that what you need is more houses, that what you need is more lawn, that what you need is, you know, just a whole lot of the material things, which means that it circumvents or denies them the opportunity to become something real because they never get a chance to deal with themselves. And so what they do is become slaves to a material god. And uh, just, just think about that for a minute and just trace history and see how many people were trapped into that same kind of thing you know, that their whole preoccupation was a material god before, you know. Uh, well, that's the whole counter-life yeah. force that uh, we are part of a conspiracy over thousands and thousands of years of aspiration that characterizes the human being. And what is constantly being changed and turned around is the human mind, uh, the way that uh, we selectively say this, that, or the other is history, mm -hmm. uh, when all we're talking about is the domination of uh, you know, male authoritarian Western civilization. That is given as history, uh, and that's not even half of the story, you see, because there are some other characteristics to the human being other than these authoritarian. And since that comes out to be the thing that the prevailing forces have glorified in their books, we accept it as history, and I, I, I really think that uh, it's nonsense. I agree with you, I think, but I th and I think this, I think it, th that's the kind of thing that has to be communicated. Because one of the things some of us are really checking out, we think that particularly, you know, that we're, there's a great influence being from the outside being put on the black community, and it has for some while, and that is the projection of the male egomania. I mean, the male ego, which puts him into some kind of sickness, uh, which denies the existence of the female as a counterpart or a complementary arm, you see. Uh, and I think that's very dangerous, because if we talk in terms of liberation, then it's, uh, it's, a, it's contradictory to talk about liberating all the males and keep the females as slaves, you see. But you know, in this whole process, it seems to me, Father, that, that uh, we have to then begin uh, to define words because uh, the definition of some words in this particular environment is uh, certainly the, the words that we use, all people don't use. They don't understand these words. And I think that this is a, uh, once we can, can have this interchange, you know, and the total definition you know, then we can do our thing and get together, right. you know. This is why black is beautiful, right. you know, yeah. it seems. Right. Well, actually, uh, I've seen so many situations where a man and a woman felt that they had to conform to preset mm -hmm. definitions of what a man was and what a woman was. Mm -hmm. And actually, between the two of them, they, they, they had a total which could express itself fully as far as life was concerned but because the man could not conform to the definition of what a man was supposed to be, mm -hmm. and because a woman was somewhat a contradiction of what that definition was. It uh, led to the destruction of a whole, and what we certainly have to be putting across is that we cannot afford to allow ourselves to be destroyed by these definitions, but here are, are two people, and if your, if your, if, if your contributions to each other are able to maintain fullness of life between the two of you, then, you know, to, to, you know, to heck with, with, with what it says you are supposed to do as a man or you as a woman, yeah. but the two of you can make a whole. But yeah. is, isn't this the spirit? The, right. You know, the and spirit is the man and woman. to the individual as well, you see, because the individual must be integrated personally in that he contains, she contains, the poles, uh, the creative potential, which requires a male principle and a female principle. And at, say, a, a mental level, you know, <coughs> on the one hand, there must be a need or a necessity. And on the other hand, there must be a force, you know, or a capability. And this happens at the level of idea. That is mm -hmm. creation. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, in terms of the cosmos, it's force and fertility. You know, in terms of spirit, it's uh, openness and inspiration. Right. In terms of the physical, it's male and female. Uh, so that one individual, whether it's an amoeba or um, a human, a dinosaur. Contains, <laughs> contains the principles that are necessary to create. And one individual must create the kind of mentality that will enable him to function harmoniously as a whole within the context of his environment in relation to other individuals, either as a husband, son, uh, you know, mother, father, then the kinship thing can be 
healthy or wholesome. Right. But this rugged individualism, you see, won't permit that because it only deals with one of your poles as a person, uh. that is the aggressive pole of stepping over everybody to acquire rather than to become. And if you have relationships, then your whole thing is to become meaningful. And so you have to sort of internalize the whole diversity so that you can, you know, create the wholeness inside yourself and therefore be a force for wholeness around you. Well, actually, speaking of that wholeness inside the, the self, I remember speaking to the counselor in one of the schools because of a, uh, a problem that my son was supposed to have had in the school. And while mm -hmm. speaking to this counselor, uh, I, I began to really began functioning as an integrated as a together as a whole. You were emotional. Yes, right? and uh, <laughs> this, uh, this counselor said to me, now Reverend, uh, there's one thing about you people, you must not allow yourselves to become emotional. <laughs> well, well, you see, I mean, my mind was clicking, my mind was clicking, you know, I, real, I felt real healthy and Dread strong, my emotions, I mean, I was together. <laughs> and when, when, when he was confronted with a, with a whole being, he couldn't deal with it, and he tried to put me in one of his boxes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I couldn't be contained any longer. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think when we talk in terms of integration, then that's what we should talk about. That's the kind of integration which is a livable, workable, viable integration. Yeah. The integration of the body, the mind, the spirit. Mm -hmm. And anything which, you know, works aside from that is wasting our time and their time, too. The one thing I think we need to talk with regard to community all the time, too, and I think that those of us in the black community have to see ourselves as not being a part of geography. Community cannot be def defined as geography or by the houses and the churches and things. But it has to be that experience with one another. And I think the kind of experience that we have to see in our community is that every black man is the father of every child and every black woman is the mother of every child. And there's no need for mothers and fathers but only for sharing, you know, and brothers and sisters, you see. Because we're born as free agents into a, you know, free world. Well, I'm glad Walt's mentioning this uh, community because it seems to me that uh, the physical environment that, that we speak of, uh, while this process uh, has to continue, we have to be concerned about the environment that, that we live in. And, uh, you know, I'd like to think of, uh, Father, the, the church, you know, which is a particular human scale. It's a, it, it's a scale that, that calls for an aspiration and a moment of silence, you know, within oneself. And then you can move down to another scale, which is uh, the uh, business scale, which you can walk into a bank and, and you know, notice and feel all kinds of strange things happening, but <laughs> are, are materialistically, you know, your mind is, is, is going in all directions. Yeah. And then I think in terms of the house now, you see, uh, black people, I think, are... Uh, uh, they have a home, you know, and I think it should be. It's a, it's a sanctuary, you know, by which everyone can, can, can talk about, uh, uh, you know, the love of, the, of each other, you know, the, these cells getting together and acting as one. Mm -hmm. So then that, that uh, it, you know, we have a temple in and of itself, and, and each, each home is a temple. And uh, uh, this is a kind of thing that we have got to uh, 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 move in this direction and the kind of environment which is conducive, you know, for a human experience, as I mentioned before, because we really don't have too much time left, and it just keeps moving in on us. Well, I think we have time. I, I really do. I think that uh, oftentimes black people overreact to a thing called time, but I think that, you know, time is with us. I think particularly when we, since we have now found out you know, that time, too, is a tool to use against us. But I understand what you're saying, Ted. Mm -hmm. You know, when you say time is running out, mm -hmm. uh, I think that it is running out for people who cannot see themselves as being a part of the human experience and mm -hmm. the new human endeavor. Right, exactly. What you're saying exactly. is that you yeah. must use the moment in depth uh, because you can't stretch it out on either end. Mm -hmm. And sure. that time is just the difference between knowing now mm -hmm. and knowing nothing. Because if you know now fully, it's past, present, and future. Mm -hmm. You know, it's on a clear day, you know, you <laughs> can't see forever. Uh, but the whole bit about the clock, you see, uh, we've been conditioned to think that here's time given to us sandwiched in between the two ends of eternity, yeah. Yeah. which is, you yeah. know, a flat thing, but like it's a dimensional thing, whereas there's a continuum which is like eternity. Is that, well, is that, is that why black people always lay? You know, it's so much like when you, uh, 
when you're in love, it seems though you've known this person all your life. Right. Well, you have. Yeah. 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 Yes, you yeah. have. You have. And you will. Yeah. And time does not run out. Uh, it has nothing to do where, with where time. Where you have this eternal experience. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, reality, um, reality anyway, is real. You know, we measure time <laughs> by the countless suns. Right. And they measure time by little machines and little <laughs> pockets. <laughs> Tell yeah. me. Yeah. But that's why the black man in being cast outside of the mainstream, being pushed out, has been placed in such a strategic location. Right. Because in being pushed out, he can examine fully all the forces that were pushing him out, a language and a culture that were growing together, a language that was supporting a capitalistic culture, a language that, you know, gave uh, root to um, individualism, you know, a thing, seek for yourself, you know, go out and get as many cars as you can and forget about the other person, that by being pushed out, we have been able to look, you know, at this whole thing that's working and from this to re-examine and reconstruct, you know, a human world right. where, you know, like, where you don't stress this rugged individualism because the whole black community is a working organism and that is our thing and right. that is the whole thing right. and not little bits of people striving for material goods, cars, right. etc. Right. It's alive with life. Right. Just think that some people become so well, you know, at being able to live that kind of life that they become bachelors, masters, and doctorates. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what those things yeah. mean. No, I, mean you know. I had something I wanted to read, but I didn't want to read it before Reg. Reg had something that I thought was pretty good. Uh, this was something by Kiel Gabran, and uh, Gabran, and maybe if I dealt with it, Reg could get his thing together. And he says, you know, I am ignorant of absolute truth, but I am humble before my ignorance, and therein lies my honor and my reward. You know. And later he says, the significance of man is not in what he attains, but rather in what he longs to attain. And he says, some of us are like ink and some like paper. And if it were not for the blackness of some of us, some of us would be dumb. And if it were not for the whiteness of some of us, some of us would be blind. Give me an ear and I will give you a voice. That's beautiful. Kind of holy. That's yeah. beautiful. In one of his other works, he says that for, in order for truth to prevail, it has to be a two-segment process that is for one to utter it and for the other to understand it and where we are we're in a position now where we have to create a vehicle to reach our people so that they may understand for the truth to prevail Let's bring the drums back. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I, I see the drums. It almost seems as though it is, is saying even more. It is true. Uh, we need the ink and we need the paper, but I, I think it is also saying we all need each other. Right, right. And uh, mm -hmm. when we all get together, <laughs> then, of course, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we, we have, we have we've got it. Right. Yeah. Well, aren't, aren't we really saying that, that there has to be a oneness, you know? Definitely. And, and black is beautiful. Finally, Reggie, uh, Reggie, that the truth uh, is prevailing, and we're making it right, prevail right. for a human liberation and a deliverance, you know, which would uh, free uh, the entire human course of events and uh, free our souls and our spirit, you know, to move on right. to a right. So we've really direction. moved from, say, uh, uh, an uncomfortable physical bondage to aspiring right. for a serious growth. Uh, of the human species as sort of escalation to a level of truth rather than uh, acquisition for the sake of acquisition to recognition that uh, what's mechanical is a tool if it's divorced from a human purpose and if it's not attached to a human purpose then it's an anti-human purpose because right. all the elements in the universe are to ser serve I think the growth and development of the human and that is the yearning that if you have no yearning no need no uh, dependence upon growth, then you become very stagnant. And, that, and then you uh, go around saying, what can I do for you? Right. But like, this is not my question. You know, I have to do everything I do for my own growth. And if anything I do impedes that growth, then it certainly isn't helpful to anyone. See, yeah, I'd, ra I'd raise the question too, as to why people have to rush. I'm just wondering why we shouldn't back up and address mm -hmm. ourselves right. to some of these things. Because sometimes what happens is you get so caught up in the daily rigors of running and jumping and racing mm -hmm. that you don't have time to see that you're not going anywhere. There's right. nowhere for you. It's like the young people, black people who graduate from high school or college with no opportunities on the other end. See, had they have sat back possibly and, you know, had time to reflect on that, you see, they're going to live anyhow. They're going to live. See, life goes beyond necessarily having to have that car. You can't eat but one steak at a time, drive one car, you know, 
can't have with one bank account that you can't get to at once at a time. Well, it's a question of whether you fill the moment with the thing yeah. or with, you know, your own expression. You know, I'd like to get back to this redefinition of words, which means that, you know, the, the words truth and knowledge and awareness and justice mean certain basic things for black people, right. you know, and they, that must be redefined. Right. And it, it's, it says that, uh, you know, don't say what we mean, you know, right. but, you know, mean what, what we say, <laughs> you see. <laughs> and I think that once we can get, yeah. once they can or we can uh, get this thing implanted in our minds, then all kinds of things can happen. Then you talk about interaction, you know, of a Dynamics, cellular structure right. which is, which it, it concentrically moves in and moves out, you know, right. uh, in, outward, keeps moving outward, and the growth becomes a... You're talking about a, a mushroom a, cloud, aren't you? Yeah, right. <laughs> that's a beautiful our, thing. <laughs> so, but you see, when you spoke about time is running out, uh, I can see time running out for these lives. Right, right, right. right. Uh, right. But, but uh, yeah. actually time is, is just beginning, or we are pitching on to the eternal. Eternity mm -hmm. into the eternal. Yes. It's, it's, it's constant. Yeah. And that's the whole thing about the cosmos, Ted, that, that <laughs> there's a constant, you see, that's eternity. Mm -hmm. And that little now and then thing, you can call it time, you see, or you can call it a lie or a dream or a wish or a hope. It's the little sometime thing that now and then attaches itself, but it keeps on going. And yeah. the constant eternity yeah. is always and also, It seems to me that, that here we are in a world and then there's other worlds uh, that we're related to. And uh, it seems to me that right now, uh, black people are, be are saying, you know, mm -hmm. that okay, we, we have to deal with each other and let this movement keep on going and the growth and relationship between each other must be maintained in order to free ourselves. And there are many mansions. Right. Yeah. Right. right. I think the one thing we all have to see too is that the, the whole lie about, say, technology and a technological advanced world being able to resolve your problems or to liberate you as being a lie. That's a lie we have to catch up with mm -hmm. quick because we live in a time where technology is being stockpiled and there's a gap between culture and technology right in the very country, you know, the very place where it's being stockpiled. And still, there is, with all the so-called technology, there is not an elimination or the will to even eliminate hunger, poverty, disease, right. you know, things that cripple right. the human spirit. So that that tends to be a lie, and that would be the same thing mm -hmm. with Ted. His business about freedom and justice and equality and those kinds mm -hmm. of words which have no substance to them, it goes right back to right. having to use a word because you can't transmit a feeling. Right, right. and right. that technology brings more danger than utility yeah. to humanity. And that's the terms on which we should deal with it, that whatever uh, forces there are that control that kind of stockpiling are affecting more danger than utility. And I think, uh, you know, there's a burden on all of us to begin to look up the microscope to those controlling mm -hmm. forces, you see, and uh, begin to redirect them. Again, if we're 75% of the world, if black people mm -hmm. represent that kind of proportion, this is our mission here in, in, in the duality we find ourselves in, in this contradictory place, is to find the truth and speak it clearly and loud, right. because the doom uh, that the danger might bring in terms of the stockpile will surely take the innocent with the guilty. I mean, you know, we, we've learned a lot of truths and uh, we have to speak clearly this message right now to the world. That's what black people like in essence are becoming a vehicle for taking a language and a culture and a way of living that are only based on the uh, very bare physical way of life and then expanding it into all three levels. So then, that then we'll have a language, culture, and way of living which encompasses both the physical, mental, and the spiritual way of living. Yeah, right. yeah I think uh, one might say, or I'll suggest this, that uh, uh, we perhaps are, have been preordained by the Supreme Being, you know, in order <laughs> to, to redirect this, mm -hmm. uh, uh, this course of human events and to uh, structure it in a way which is uh, 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 an experience that uh, all of us long for, you know, in the, in the cold light of dawn. And uh, I don't know, I, it seems to me that, that uh, I, I try this every day, and I think that uh, black people are doing the same thing in every nick and corner of the, uh, of the earth. 
mm-hmm. which are looking in the mirror and they that they see a direct reflection of, of truth, you know, mm-hmm. somehow. But the thing is, yeah. it's not so odd either, Ted, because it's consistent with their nature. Mm-hmm. See, they, when they start to view themselves, they see that, you know, many t- their forefathers, many of them before them, had attempted to do the very same thing. Mm-hmm. They're readdressing themselves to the Bhagavad Gita and to, you know, the Torah and the Talmud and to Zen, the t- Zen and to the, the uh, you know, Holy Quran, you see, that mm-hmm. sort of thing. So it's, it's nothing new. And if you notice that even people around the world who are not of, of black culture and black history certainly are starting to look at such approaches. We're all turning to the east. Yeah. All turning to the east. Yeah. And, and mm-hmm. I'd say now that we have become so conscious, you know, of all this knowledge and uh, we have, we know about ourselves and we know therefore about the world, where, where do we go from here? You know, where does this new knowledge take us? Well, actually, there's one thing that occurs to me and That is how religion has actually been a divisive thing in itself uh, in times past. Uh, You know, Jew and and Christian and and Buddhist and Muhammad, you know, etc. And what I have noticed as we have been in communion with people with various religious persuasions, that somehow or another, there is a recognition by all that there is a divine creator and we are the created and that it is uh, expanding this whole idea of wholeness mm-hmm. uh, where a man is in communion with God, his creator, that instead of us feeling divided and separated uh, by religion as it has been, that we are mm-hmm. finding that this is uh, contributing further to the wholeness and the completion of, of a people. All the so-called religions to me represent a particular time and day. You can almost date them and put right. the man's name on there and therefore it loses its divine uh, yeah. responsibility. And that the fact of aspiration itself, the yearning itself, the inner uh, realization of a potential that is superior, you know, and the, and the growth